um, she typically is wearing her uh, symbols on her fingers, which are her arcane focus. Um, she typically has her harp and um, other musical instruments, plus um, her gold pouch, which is never too far. And um, she, that's, that's who she is. All right, let's go to Beaky. Please describe your character. Uh, all right, so Beaky, he is a cobalt, and uh, cobalt that's a little different in the fact that he's quite jacked. He has some pretty strong muscles. He's an artificer that has been reincarnated uh, from being a water. Genasi. Genasi. <laughs> Oh, you tried that. Trying to say it properly. So uh, I'll show the work, the artwork that I'm working on for your character. You still no, said Genazi. Yeah, Biggie, you're so close, but. You're almost there. You're all, it, so it, very close. So, soon enough. We're, we're very proud of you for the attempt. I'll get, I'll get there one day. I'll get there one day. Yeah. But I'm an artificer. I have leather armor that glamours and just kind of, you could clearly see it's magical in nature. I ride a big mechanical spider. And I am strapped with all types of manners of uh, weaponry, potion, vials, and um, all types of tools abound around my body. And the straps of my spiders are little tiny boots that make him climb up the wall. And I'm strapped into a magical um, mount that basically makes it look like my ass is stuck to my spiders unless I want to get off. And that's what Vicky looks like. Okay, Frank. Frank, you're a dick. <laughs> right. Frank, so. can we stop the early trolling, please? <laughs> With the damn hat. Now introduce your character since I called on you. All right, so I'm Alderman. I am a silver dragon born. I am tall and beautiful and just stunning when you look at me. He's also a giant asshole. <clears throat> that too. Yep. All right, and Keljack. Jack, you gotta turn your bike on, dude. I got it. Go ahead. Yeah, thanks. I know how to use it. <laughs> it's all right. It's a little weird sometimes with the software. Would you introduce yeah, uh, you? Kel Jack is a seven and a half foot tall uh, pachyderm person, also known as a luxodon. Uh, long trunk, uh, weathered but not not as wrinkly as his older brethren. Um, he carries with him at his side a mace. Uh, he has a large stone shield. Uh, he has just enough clothing to cover parts because apparently that's a thing. Um, he's not really accustomed to it where he comes from, but, but it makes other people comfortable, I guess. All right, so we last pick up where you guys ended up going to the pirate, uh, not the pirate, uh, you went to the old rooms, which I have the wrong map up. Hooray. And there's my wet cat chicken in the background. <laughs> yeah, if you have something up on your screen, you can share your screen to show the group. Yeah, I'm going to just try to get this to show. Yay. All right. Where does it show the share screen? The share screen in the middle on the bottom. Between participants. Yeah, my blonde's showing. <laughs> oh, there. Uh, screen two. So, you guys are actually, can you see it? Yep. Yep. All right. And you won't let me zoom. Okay. So, you guys are actually at the Forgotten Civilization Ruin, which is yes. an old site that was occupied by the triplets who are three half draw siblings with their names Josenetta, Zarek, and Jesslyn. So can I go back to Zoom? Zoom? Sure. No. <laughs> this yeah. session was sponsored by Zoom Cloud Meetings. <laughs> Zoom. If you need a meeting, use Zoom. 
Zoom is oh good. Boy. Oh boy. Uh, so you just need to unshare your screen now. So you click the same thing. Oh, uh, there you go. Stop sharing. There we go. Thank you. You're welcome. Learning on the fly, people. So you guys are in the runes. You actually found an old journal from the old one, Coraline, at the Eritia village, which Biki actually discovered he had a relative and was from the island when he originally was a uh, water genasi, which this island, Ozurite Island, is made up of genasis, sea elves, and tritons. So you guys went to discover the Forgotten Civilization runes in hopes to find Genzetta to see if Keljak could find any more information from her of what exactly went down and why the, the civilization, anyone who goes past the water barrier turns into Seafoam who was born and raised on this island. So Glenn, Beaky, Bucky, and Keljak found an item in the wool and Amethyst went ahead. But before that, the seer came to help bring Glenn back to life and quickly stole Oldwyn away for a mission. So Oldwyn, you actually were with the seer trying to find with- You were told it was for punishment. Well, that was for it, punishment there was, but she, he with uh, Sunny and Calypse went and uh, Pyle, Peele went to help the seer with some stuff. So you guys were trying to find a hidden location that belonged to Neem for when he was creating his followers. So we, Olwen, you're gonna come in later. Olwen's character has currently lost his powers and he actually has three mark, he'll come in with three markings on his arm, which is part of his punishment that he has to do three good deeds in order to earn his powers back. So we start with Amethyst who ended up falling into the secret hideaway in this uh, ruins. So Amethyst, as you look around, you let your eyes readjust because this is darker than usual. You see that there seems to be a ceremonial room with vials, which they seem to be labeled, do an uh, do an investigation check on this. Seventeen. Seventeen. You see them all labeled. When it, it seems like they're empty. Like it looks like 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 dry blood mixed on inside these vials. It says earth, air, fire, water, all the elements that you know of, labeled. So, and you kind of see a body, a cor like a dry husk of looks like the body somehow was getting its blood drain of its elemental powers. Um. Can I check the body for anything maybe that was left over? Is, there any, is it like, is there a cloak or any sort of clothing that I can check on the body? For any idea? There's some clothing, but it's it's kind of to the point where it's so sensitive that... Um, but there's ice cream on the screen for some reason. <laughs> yeah. Um, so sensitive that it starts falling apart. Do I see where I came in or left? Is it like an obvious exit? exit? Uh, do another investigation check. It's going to be a little bit higher DC to figure out what's going on. 15 plus 4 is 19. You kind of know where you were, but you can't see the seal to reopen it. I'm going to look at the door, or perhaps the door, I'm not sure, where I came in. And I'm going to look at the vials. And um, I'm going to, before I leave, I'm going to investigate the vials and see if there's any traps or anything. All right. So, so go ahead and do uh, investigation for traps. Eleven. Eleven. You see some faulty old traps around. 
but that is about it. I am absolutely going to regret this, but I will reach out to the one that is fire mm -hmm. appearing and pick it up. Okay. All right, so Glenn, you had just noticed that um, Amethyst had just slipped away in the wall. Uh, Hold on. Oh my god, he turned himself into a pickle. When you unmuted yourself, you muted yourself. There That's you go. Why. Yeah, so I'm going to try rushing um, Beaky in the translation and transcribing of the uh, the glyph that we were doing. Mm -hmm. um, and try to play it off, and then as he's examining it, or hopefully if he's examining it, I'm going to try to slip away and follow where I saw Amethyst go. Okay. So I give you advantage on the investigation since you have a rough idea. Let's see if you can figure out to open this. Okay. Okay. That that advantage is very helpful <laughs> and, and very needed right now. Oof. For investigation, you said. Mm-hmm. Twenty-five. I got a nineteen and a three. All right, so you actually, you're running your hands against the wall and you feel a little indent and you push in and the door opens. Amethyst, you start hearing the door open and you see Glenn with Beaky, Bucky, and Keljack. Well, guys, just be careful of the uh, dead body on the floor. I found something that's very interesting, but I think the... There's something in here that might have caused this fate to this poor creature. Looks like kind of a husk of a man he used to be now. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, but if you look at these little parts, and I'm just going like, to point to a certain area, mm -hmm. it looks like there was some sort of magic or blood drum. And I just picked this up, and I'll hold up the fire elemental potion type thing. There's one for all the basic elements. <sighs> Can I uh, take a look at these vials just to like determine is it like made of blood or is there like some sort of magic? We established that. It? Well, your character doesn't know it, but Amethyst knows it is a blood. But you can do an investigation. All right. Uh, that is a thirteen. Thirteen. You can't exactly tell. You see something like stuck inside uh, the wall, on the wall of the vial, it kind of looks a certain color and stuck there. Oh, and, and Bucky, don't, don't open that. It's, mm -hmm. it's definitely mm -hmm. blood. Ugh. I mean, from the way it looks, it uh, kind of looks like it might be kind of old. No, it's, it's definitely something. It's definitely magical, but it's definitely blood as well, so. Let I wonder it, what they were doing with it. it. Judging, could it be have something to do with the curse? The elemental magic, maybe. Why don't I uh, take a few minutes and just uh, detect magic on this stuff? That'll right. tell us the school of magic. I'll hand mine to Keljack. I'll All put right. mine down and right in front of Keljack. All right, you feel that it is all elemental magic. That this is screaming elemental magic. And as you look at the bias on the floor, you feel very faint traces of elemental magic in that dead husk. Like as if there's a residue left over of what it was. Well, what, what school of magic of the, the element would that be? You're detecting fire, earth, air, water, lightning, light, darkness. Well, nothing new, I guess. That was a waste. Well, 
Maybe, maybe you should take it just in case. Well, as you go to do that, you hear something that sounds like crackling and breaking happening in the room, like as if you're hearing bones snap into place and move. I'm going to quick draw my pistol. And just... Uh, Crossbow is no, out. Just go. You hear a horrifying noise. I need everyone to make a DC wisdom saving throw, please. Am I there? Old one, not yet. I'm going to bring you in a couple minutes. Wisdom. All right, that rolled off the desk. That's better. Okay. Okay. 16. 19. 18. All right. Give me one second. Kel Jack, Vicky, what'd you get for a wisdom saving throw? And I've got to go grab some stuff real quick. Just wait until I come back to tell me. <sighs> Probably would have been smart of me to set up some sort of boundary right where all the other dice were falling. So let's do that. Um, how do I know how to get this to stand? Okay, you have that to stand. Okay, Beaky, Keljack, what'd you get? Is this a uh, charmed or frightened effect? This is a wisdom. It's supposed to be frightened. <laughs> then I have advantage on it. Okie dokie. So 26 on the save. All right. I was, um, I didn't remember. You had me uh, translating. Was I there for the you, Glenn, would you miss? Because you're doing your room. Glenn grabbed you, oh. and you're in the room now with Amethyst. Okay, I didn't hear him say grab me. Sorry. That's okay. okay. All right. Um, so this is Wisdom. I got a 15. 15. All right. So you all pass, and you turn around, and you see this husk start coming back to life. All right, I need everyone to roll initiatives pretty please. All right. Three for Kel Jack. All right, hold on, let's, you got That's 30. a 25 for Bucky. <laughs> All right, hold on. 30 for Kelljack. No, three. Oh, three. Okay. Yeah, type it into the chat so I can see. Uh -uh, I can work from there. All right. Okay. Please use their phone. So I am putting it. Oh, that's it. So I have your um, clips on my uh, tray right now. All right, let me roll. So let me roll for the creature. Alright, it's going here. Alright. So top of the round is Amethyst. Oh. Kim, you're muted. Wait, Amethyst. Amethyst. I got a 25. Oh, you got a... Oh, sorry. Why did I... Okay, sorry, Bucky. 
My brain is not working today. I apologize. Go. No worries. Um, all right. So I guess hell, I'll use the uh, right off the bat. I'm just going to go straight with the normal revolver. Okay. Uh, 15, plus four. 16 to hit. That hits. Alright. 1d8. Sorry, 2d8. And that's nine uh, piercing damage. Okay. On the first shot, second okay. shot, again with the revolver. Oh, shit. Uh, 11. Hold on. Oh, wait. Almost forgot the plus four. Okay, uh, 14. Um, 14 for the second damage? No, that's uh, 14 for the to hit. Oh, 14 to hit. 14 does just hit. Oh, wow. All right. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, uh, 11 piercing. 11 piercing. Yep, it, it's still barely standing. Oh, wow. All right, that ends my turn. Okay. I need paper, 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 paper. Paper. Paper, pen, and then paper. Happy days. Okay, Amethyst, your turn now. You see this thing's actually starting to slow down. Hey. Um, I'm going to... Take my my zills and I'm going to clap my hands in a little beat, and I am going to put a cloud of daggers over where it's where it's standing. Okay. Um. So does it have to make any saving throws when it enters, or at the end of its turn? Um. A creature takes forty-four slashing damage when it enters the spell area for the first time, or turn or starts its turn there. Okay, so when daggers, gets, such a good spell. Yeah, so when mm -hmm. it gets to its turn, it will take that. All right, Glenn. Well, where's like your I video, said, buddy? I'm eating. Fucking, <laughs> I don't want people watching me eat. Fuck off. You don't but want no. people to know he's eating his damn tacos. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> Y'all don't need to see how sloppily I eat tacos. God damn it! Oh please, I go so steep in my tacos. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just ham fisting with fucking nachos. Bad news in one hand, the taco in the other. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But no, so um again, crossbows are already out and drawn. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna take my three shots. Go ahead. One of them hits. <laughs> okay, what's the damage? Well, because well, yeah, here, let me well, here's two questions. One okay. Would a 15 hit? Yes, it would. So two then hit, because the uh, last shot was a two, so that's not going to hit. Nope. Um, secondly, is someone in melee with the creature? No. No, it's actually by it's by the ceremony area, which is a little further away. You sons of bitches, you stole my sneak attack. No, it's fine. <laughs> 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 All right, so if that's the case, then... That's uh, 30 points of damage. How do you want to do it? Uh, just shot shot to the knee, drop to the knee, shot between the eyes. All right. So as it's like slowing down, trying to hobble towards you from the damage from Bucky and the prepared damage to come from Amethyst, you take a shot right to its knee and it goes down and it's still trying you know, to kind of hobble forward and then and, you shoot uh, it right in the head. Yeah, I was going to say, back. to make it cooler... As I go up for the second shot, just because the cloud of daggers is already there, I'm going to take one shot of the dagger and ping it off so that some daggers All fly. All right, so it. you actually end up ricocheting <laughs> off a couple of the cloud of daggers, and it actually <laughs> hits from the back end of the head and comes out through the front. Thanks. I mean, I haven't been able to do a trick shot like that in years. Holy shit. So, so just left me finish it. Yeah, well, 
I mean, gotta be sure. Just as I that happened. 